Welcome one and all, my name is Tavis, and today, well, we got a Banshee. This is quite honestly an ugly make, but I mean, even ugly can be made nice if we just put enough effort into it, I think. We'll see. And if you can't salvage it, at least we have something. Now I'm just gonna move some things out of the way here because for some odd reason I didn't prepare properly. I just as usual tossed the camera up and started recording, which is a bit. And I just hit the camera. Great! Now you can't even see the mech anymore. Let's see if I can find a good angle for the light there. So, hmm. Let's see what we can do with this. Now, this thing is going to be painted in uh, the colors of the. Uh, Royal, Royal Guard of the uh, Learned Alliance. That means a lot of blue. All different kinds of blue, actually. I have a light bulb in my face, and that's not particularly nice. Can I perhaps move it a bit more? Now it's even more in my face. And this can be great if I have my hand here. Lots of shadows. Let's uh, see if we can just temporarily move that around a bit. So. We have a good light, but not. Oh, that's a different light at all. Uh -huh. That was gonna be fun to color correct later on. There we go. All right. I think I'll do this. I think. Mm. This thing doesn't necessarily like to agree all the time, but uh, it is what it is. So, now this make itself doesn't really have any big and glorious purposes. It's not necessarily known for anything super superior, it's just a make. And, but the color scheme itself is nice because it's a deep blue. With some yellow, not yellow, gold uh, additions on the arms, and well, sort of part way down the body, we're gonna work on that. But basically, we're gonna start by base coating most of it dark blue, as you do. I mean, this can be a lot of layers to this, but I like this blue, it's one of these very saturated in blue. It is, for those wondering, the dark sky of Army Painter fame. So I say yes, usual, if this is not noted anywhere else. Paints are always Army Painter paints. Because, as I said before, I bought the big set and I have a lot of them and, well, this is the most cost-efficient way of getting a lot of paints right now. Oh, can you actually see what I'm doing? Ah, let's see if we can actually... There's a lot of things going on today, it's not working. The light is shifting all the time, so... Anyway... The paint itself is say, this sort of nice, rich, dark... But not too dark blue. That leaves the make looking... Fairly tidy, actually. We're also going to paint all the guns and stuff with metal, so we don't need to worry particularly much about that. We'll tidy that up later. And we're basically using a big flat head brush to apply this, because we want to apply quickly, not necessarily neatly. Because this brush does not do neatly particularly well, but it does quick. And well, this level, at this point, quick is... For the better. Now we have to be a bit more careful because we are soon going to hit the area where we can start painting things gold. Because gold is nice. This is going to be fun color creating later. But it should be okay. We'll, we'll get by. Yeah. 
Now, of course, most of these show them with the legs being included in this. But I think I'm going to do is gold trim on the legs instead rather than a partition. I think it's called a partition, I don't know, I can't remember actually, but usually um, a thin edge of the leg is uh, gold. And I'm going to start to do a thing down the middle of the leg. Uh, different folks, different strokes, and all that. So we're going to try and create a line here, right in line with this chest adornment here. So you can see this right along with this thing. It's a partition for our gold and not gold areas. Oh well, that, that worked mostly at least. I'm not entirely sure what paint we're going to be using for the non gold for the gold yet, because they have a few options there too, but. As I say, the main, main idea now is to get the blue done. Also, some people might wonder why I'm not using a paint handle, well, because I have literally not attached a paint handle yet. That's why. We're going to dig that out for the next step and actually attach it to the paint handle, because it makes life easier. And, well, why make life more difficult than it needs? So, like that. A nice, happy blue make. I'm still recording, even. That's nice. I have lately had a problem with my phone keeps switching out on me. Yes, I'm using a phone to record this because the other camera is... It didn't like this at all. And it had a bad habit of becoming rightfully upset at about the 25 to 30 minute mark. And, um, well, piss the fuck off. And we don't like that. So, I'm just going to let this dry a bit. We are, in the meantime, applying the gold base. And, well, we're probably not going to start with the gold at all. And depending if I can find the gold, that is. Ah, Jesus Christ, I put it way over there. We're actually going to start off with a bronze, because building up gold is a, it, it, it's a thing. A fun thing, I promise. Very funny, very un un entertaining, and I don't know why, for some odd reason, I'm uh, taking out the flathead brush for this. Oh dear, Did way too much paint for that one. But you know, I mean, I'm basically just gonna slather it on to begin with. But this is what we do at this point, and I just try to work it out. Yeah, the reason we start with dark bronze is because it's easier to work up from than just a pure gold. Because none of these metallics are particularly opaque, so it takes a few layers. And if you start out at the very same level, you're going to have to work a lot harder on getting it good shadows and stuff. You know, <coughs> quite honestly, I'm not entirely sure I'm going to be using all the audio because, well. I might change my mind and make this some more tutorial video, but the tutorial video doesn't even do things anymore. I don't know. YouTube is weird. Uh, YouTube has always been weird, but some days YouTube is weirder than usual. And sometimes I wonder if things actually even, even do anymore. Now, as I said, the idea here is to have a sort of line here between the gold and the blue and of course the ideal way to do this would be with a stencil but we don't have a stencil do we no we don't so we don't because this is apparently way more fun challenges and all that you should challenge yourself i mean it is actually good to challenge yourself but it's also sometimes, you shouldn't challenge yourself just for the sake of challenging yourself sometimes. Sometimes it's okay to just enjoy things. Oh dear. Ah, oh, it almost worked. That's nice. Now, as a lot of these mechs are, of course, in their parade uniform, so to speak. Because 
those are the most colorful and rememberable of the outfits. I mean, you don't, I don't really think you're going to see the Royal Guard actually step out into an actual combat encounter being painted gold and blue. But who knows? Maybe they're crazy. Maybe they like that kind of stuff. I don't know. I'm not one to judge. This is partially the space marine effect, or perhaps the other way around, to be quite honest. Um, and it all ties back into nightly li uh, livery. Uh, I should paint this gold all the way up to this part, because I kind of like it. So like the casing holding the gun is gold, and then the gun itself is not gold. That's science for you. Not gold. Scientific color. But, you know, it is what it is. Again, I'm not entirely sure we're going to be using this audio, so I don't know why I'm talking, but talking I am. Can't even see what I'm doing right now. I'm trying to paint the inside. That's a. I really hate that part. I like, love painting things, but the painting inside of arms and guns and stuff. Freaking hate it. Also, I'm rubbing some paint off here, which is also bad. All right. He did a little tumble. Now, uh, we have to clean it up. I can already see, already see things being messed up. But it's good looking, nothing else. Mm. So let's go in and touch up some of these spilt areas. When you're touching up, stippling is the way to go. Stipple on the paint because you need to put them slightly thicker than you regularly would because, well, you probably need to. Because for the most part, you're trying to cover the over a color that is in no way, shape, or form matching the one you already put down. Mm. Mm. Oh, well, it's not the worst paint job I've seen in my day. It's not the greatest either, but it's not the worst. So, once we're done with the dark sky, we're going to take Griffin Blue, which is a brighter blue and part of me is like should I really do that because this is a really nice blue part of me thinks we should go on to hedge hedge edge highlighting and just be done with it but I don't know we can have to try this let's have a look at this stuff oh dear that's not the color I thought it's gonna be it did not look like that color in the bubble. I don't think we'll be using that one. It was very aggressive. We're using a crystal blue instead, I think. Because crystal blue is also very blue, but um, more like the color I thought it was going to be. Let's see. Let's try this other panel we're not particularly worried about. Like a bottom panel somewhere. This is a way too early test of paneling, actually. Yeah, that actually looks really nice. I think we're going to go with this. That means we're going to put on a layer of blue on it. To just solidify it. Because there's so many panel lines on this thing. I don't know why I keep, why I keep painting mechs, because there's so crazy much panel lines on it. I don't know. Why do I do it to myself? Who the F knows? Yeah. I think this is going to end up nicely. It has this a few panels here. 
yeah. Uh, so how much would you can actually see in this conditions, but yeah, that looks good. We're gonna fish out some void shell blue to, to include in the highlighting process because we need something with a lot more pop in it too, somewhere along the line. Yeah, this is sort of thing you stumble into every now and then. Paints that don't really behave like the way you think they're gonna be behaving and you're like, oh, it looks nice, but it's not what I'm expecting. Yeah. yeah. I'm currently painting a paint with a space maze actually. Just to add something random to this. We should add the stripe on the leg already, just so make sure that I know where it's going. You see, we have this really nice uh, stripe to start with, so we're gonna go in on that one and paint that metal. Just to keep track of where the metal is gonna be going later. They're gonna have to freehand, which is always amazingly entertaining. There, just so you can see it. Yeah, it's not bad, but it's not great either. Yeah, something like that. And the same thing for the other side. Getting the first initial stripe solid. Yeah, I think that'll be good. We're gonna come back once this has dried and cured properly. So, back. Now we're gonna hit this with some nice edge highlighting. that we're gonna mix up actually some void shield with some crystal and we're gonna carefully go over a lot of lines these things have more more panel lines are strictly necessary
Oops, that went a bit too dark. I need a better brush for this. I don't have a better brush for this. That's a problem. The brush I would be using for this kind of died on me. Unprecedented, I know. But yeah, beyond that, it's just a question of really just knocking home a massive amount of edge highlighting and panel lining. There's not much more to say about this. We are gonna go over all of this. But it's also very boring to watch. Trust me. I don't necessarily enjoy watching it either. Especially as it's mostly just a lot of fiddly busy work so I might if you don't mind save you that now I have an idea that is to start putting things up unedited on some sort of patreon page or something but I need to think about that because that would just be another layer of complexity onto things I'm not entirely sure I want a layer of complexity onto things right now. Also, I'm pretty sure no one would pay for that. I mean, would people honestly pay for like about an hour of me just rambling incoherently and painting models? I don't think so. We'll see. Time will tell, I guess. It's an improvement. So I kind of like this sort of cartoon, almost, style of it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm just going to simply leave this off here 
and come back to you once everything is uh, edge highlighted. Because, well, to be entirely honest, I don't think as I said anyone cares to watch me sitting here fiddling with this for an hour. And it's not gonna take exactly an hour, but you get the idea. Well, well. Right, let's paint some gold onto this thing. We are applying greedy gold to, well, all the gold areas. Uh, trying to avoid painting in all the uh, um, bronze areas, because I kind of want to leave a little bit of darker color in there, just to have some extra contrast helping me with the shadows and such. Now that show particularly well on camera because the lights are bright in here. But there is a distinct reddish hue to the copper that we are now slowly but surely working away. As I say, trying to leave it in the deepest parts, most inner recesses and such, such as just to make sure that we have a little bit of wiggle room once we hit everything with a wash because that's gonna be the next step after this is hitting things with a wash to make sure that we get some nice deepness and make sure that the um, uh, the shadows what we will call it actually pops out because Especially with the metallics, there's not much you can do with the limited amount of thing that limited amount of paints. Just three. It's not all that much I can do to make sure that I um,
get some nice highlights because you can't really change the color of these sort of gold paints. I'm not talking about regular paints because if you try to hit them with even silver, they're going to be very wonky when they come out the other end. So instead, we try to leave some the darker color in the absolute depths of the plum things. Just to make sure, oh sorry, hit the camera there. You see, in order to have this proper right now, it's sitting very close to my head. So every now and then I'm going to knock it and I'm very sorry about that, but that's just the way it is. But yeah, so we're going to hit, hit, hit this with some nice solid washes later on, just to I say bring out some of the shadows a bit more, making them pop a bit. Because we need them a lot. But yeah, the idea here is basically that it would be a Royal Guard Marine. Make on patrol, perhaps standing guard outside the palace in Tharkel, perhaps just doing its thing. I also painted a visor, I'm not sure that we actually filmed that, but I painted the visor in just to make sure that I have a good base um, to make maintain some good to maintain some good solid um, occlusion basically Sure that the shadows that comes from the top here is gonna be able to be seen. But yeah, like that. Will you look at that? It is a make. We are now gonna hit this, I think, with some gentle persuasion of should go with strong tone perhaps. Strong tone or soft tone, that's a question. I mean it's actually a lot more other questions too, but uh, those are the questions right now. Soft or strong tone for the gold? I think strong tone is better actually. Because it gives you this sensation of being able to really go in deep on the nitty gritty. Now we're gonna, so we're gonna lose a lot of the specularity with this now. And we're going to bring it back later on because this is matte, this comes out matte once you do this. Not like super matte or anything, but matte. Uh, or like, not the matte itself, but it maddens the gold. It makes it a bit shiny, but it also maddens out the, some of the effect of the gold. As you can see, it really is needed because it really, really brings out the most subtle tones in the gold. Gives a bit of age too, to be honest. That's nice. So I want to get this into all the little nooks and crannies to really make sure that we have some proper 
depth to it. I mean, look at this. This looks nice, actually. I haven't really done all that much yet. But yeah, just putting it in a bit sloppily in places where you want a bit of shadow. It's a nice way to do it. Trying to catch all the odds and ends. I, mean, I think you can see like the difference here. Yeah, it's more visible to me for the naked eye, but it's still kind of visible. You can still sort of see where the shadows are creeping in. I'm going to do a mishmash of brushing and almost stipling to get it where we want it. And as I say, when it comes to washes, I think that Army Painters is some of the best for regular washes. Of course, we not compare that to oil washes or things like that, because that is a completely different beast. But just for this, just regular, regular old washes, I think these are some of the best. I mean it should be because this is what they got started with. The paint range started out with washes, so that should be the good, the good. Part of the range, no matter what. So, like that, all the gold is put on the way it should. We are now going to go in and wait up dry, and then we're going to hit it with a highlight. There's a lot of waiting around. So, in the meantime, we're going to try something. First off, I can see I can find blue tone. Here's the blue tone. What happens if I put some blue tone on it? I can test my foot down there a bit gently, see what happens. I'm not entirely sure actually, because the blue tone does not, sorry, does not have the same, doesn't have the really the same uh, tone as this. Let's try and test just on this one. Let's yeah, see if it actually does any difference. It does blend a bit, that's for sure. We're gonna let that dry with it to see what we think about that. So, without further ado, uh, boop! Alright, now everything is dried and, well, sort of dried. Let's, let's see what this did to the foot, because I'm curious. No, I'm not letting lossiness of it. I'm gonna leave that to the crows, basically. So, now it's time for bright gold. Why bright gold? Well, ah, dear lord, try it in. Because bright gold is a good way to get some brightness back into it. Because I said, the, the um, effect of uh, adding the wash does dull it a bit. So now I'm gonna go in and basically put some bright gold on all the edges. Yes I know it's technically just more edge highlighting but it kind of needs to be done in order to get back that luster that it used to have. Now this is not going to be an exact science, because this brush doesn't do exact sciences, and I don't really want to be an exact science either, I want it to be, I want it to be a bit rough actually, it has a charm I think. Now 
there are times when you want a really sharp highlight, but in this case I think being a bit rough actually adds a bit adds a bit of feeling to it. I don't know. I might be wrong. I think it does. I kinda like it this way being a bit a bit uh, more It gives a more antique feel almost, and for me that is not necessarily a bad thing, seeing how a lot of them are very old, venerated old machines. Because, I mean, when a Mac is, like, old enough to have seen hundreds of years of combat, you don't expect it to look spit shine new, do you? I mean, even the most well for, cared for Mac is going to sh show some signs of wear and tear and I mean considering the weight and importance that we put on patina these days I would somehow think that a near priceless war machine would also hold this fairly fairly high value on patina But I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, again, I don't know, that's just my th thoughts on the matter, that these crazy people would probably consider Mick Patina to be a very important thing, I don't know. Especially if you make didn't see combat all that often. Meaning that it was possible to keep the patina. But I mean, the books talk about battle scars and such, almost like the machines were alive. So I would think that it actually there's this a certain school of thought that keeps some value in these sort of things. And again, I could be wrong, I don't know. Sorry, that was a bit outside of the camera, but basically we're doing just gone over the, all the edges. Like that. Now we're gonna paint the guns. Bring out the big guns. Let's see now, where is that? That is your gun metal gray. There is uh, also a good thing that I just smacked the So again, I'm going to show you later what this setup looks like here, because it is kind of amazing, actually. In a lot of ways, it is kind of amazing, the setup I have. And here we're just going to go quick and dirty. The first layer. We're gonna brush this later on, but we go first layer is quick and dirty because we're just gonna get something that covers. Something that covers. Again, do you see what I'm doing? I keep getting just a closer edge there. I think I accidentally moved the camera some at some point. Ah.
think there's a chance in hell you could see what I was doing there, but basically we just went over and painted the entire... I don't know what gun that is. I would assume some sort of auto cannon, but I'm actually not entirely sure, because I have not in my memory the exact weapons layout of this machine. Yeah, I kind of like, well, that gives me sort of anonymity of it. It's, nothing has really ever been that spectacular, done lore-wise with this thing. It's not a super, superstar mech by any stretch of the imagination. But it's a workhorse. It does what it sets out to do. I remember thinking, playing with this, that it's kind of, it's kind of a letdown. It doesn't really... It is not quite as fearful as it tries to be. Its bite is definitely worse than its bark. In this regard to the fact that it's heavily armed. But at the same time, it poses self like sort of, sort of... Almost angel death-like thing. And it doesn't really live up to that. Unfortunately. I say it's a cool mech. It, it's, especially looks wise it's really cool. With this sort of grinning skull visor and everything. Oh dear fucking hell. Mm. That's a problem painting like this. Sometimes you don't see where the brush is going because of the angle. That's a problem painting the camera. Sometimes you don't see what the, where the brush is going and then you realize you end up painting something you shouldn't have painted. Like the back of the head there for example. We're gonna fix that now. First, wipe that off. Go over a bit of wet brush to mash it down a bit. On some paint. Fix that. So, we are going to wait for the weapons to dry and then we're going to dry brush them. In the meantime, and between time, we are going to find some uniform grey. Use that to put in a bit of specularity in the end. Not specularity, occlusion in here. So, we can paint. The top edge here, ever so gently, but the dot by way too much there. Ever so gently. I mean, that's not particularly gently at all, is it? But ever so gently. So, I just want a small line of white down there. So I'm going to hit this with a green wash and that is going to transform into a nice looking so yeah it's starting to look like something actually mm -hmm. now this is Definitely more retail level than this professional painted level. And in a way, I kind of wish that I had energy today to spend more time on it. But I don't, unfortunately. I'm full of stress for other things right now, and that unfortunately does add a bit of. Thing to it. Meaning that I don't really put the energy into this that I should. But 
but you know sometimes you just have to buckle down and get things done am i entirely happy with this paint job no and i'll probably go back in and f touch it up later at some point but i'm not entirely unhappy with it either it has its charm without a doubt Oops, sorry. Yeah, like that. Oh, actually, it might be another model. I think this latest one is supposed to be painted backwards, really. They tend to have a bunch of those at so one point painted, ba pointed backwards that ended up on the front side of the mech. Because rear mounted lasers are cool on a tactical point of view, but they don't really do much. Elsewise, um, dark tone for when we should shade those, and I think I have the green tone here somewhere too. Yeah, military shader, not what I'm looking for. The green tone, yeah, it's a green tone. Right then, time to apply some green tone to the visor. It's gonna be interesting. See, it usually goes tits up completely and entirely. Nice. And now I'm just gonna let it dry, and you're gonna hit it with some. No, you know, actually, want to do it. let's do it like this. I have it here with some. Tesseract Glow, actually, because that is a really good color for that. Just to get a little bit of brightness into it. See, it's a Tesseract Glow right at the edge here. While the silhouette, it blends nicely. Yeah, that looks good. Very nice, we're gonna do that for lasers too. Because also it's a really nice color for that sort of thing. It's fluid, it looks nice, it's got a nice pop to it. I mean that is what it's designed for after all. To have a nice pop. Should we paint the mess as red, just to be on the fun side of things? Just to have, have it done once we start inking. Sorry. I need a bit more red there, I think. Sorry, if you can't see what I'm doing right now, just applying red dots to the missile launcher. So, now it's time to bring out the bigger brush and we're going to add the last dab of dark tone to all the guns. Make sure that they actually really have this dark and gritty tone to them. Why that? Well, because again, I think it is important and it will be a nice contrast to the Oh, so shiny silver and gold. That's an energy weapon, isn't it? We have to fix that. More tesseract.
sorry. Uh, I feel like I should say sorry every time I hit the camera. That is half the video at this point. Especially on the underside, I want a dark, really dark tone. Sorry. To make sure that we get a sort of shadow effect. So, there we go. Oh, you're gonna get a just a little kiss of that, and you're gonna get a little kiss of that too. And then we reach reach for last time for a tesseract glow. Actually, I don't think I need that in this case. I can just apply blue because I think it's a PPC on the arm. I don't know. Could be. Time will tell. There, and then you're gonna hit that with some blue tone. Once that's dry, to get it back down to something proper. Yeah, that is a make. We're gonna touch up a few more things before putting it in a bag, but contents and purposes, that is in the bag. So, well, I'm gonna put this into beauty mode and then we are going to, basically, we're gonna say goodbye for the day. This is pretty much as good as it gets. Now, until next time. Stay safe, be kind, and do, do pay fair.